Okay, let's see here. Um, so I'm painting this avocado. My setup is pretty weird right now. I have uh, my phone kind of right in front of my palette, so I'm not really sure if this is gonna work out. But I will try my best. So I set up my avocado still life on the floor because I wanted it to be kind of matching with um, the bread and butter painting that I did before in the square format. So I'm gonna be looking over top of it and I'm gonna draw in the cutting board. I'm trying to leave a little extra space on the sides because when it's framed, it's gonna cover about a quarter of an inch with the mat. So it's kind of hard to remember to do that, but I'm trying. Putting this knife painted this kitchen knife so many times. <laughs> yeah, the canvas is pretty small, but um, at least with this, I should be able to do the entire thing for you all. I don't usually work quite this small. These avocados are going to be so tiny. Then I have some of this fancy bread that we got from the farmer's market. Over here, it's this really good uh, sourdough bread. They only sell it at the farmer's markets, and it's a garlic sesame sourdough. Okay, so you got bread slice up here, bread slice here, whole avocado here, cut in half with the seed, a quartered one here, got the knife going up, and then the handle goes a little bit off the edge. So it's not quite that far. It's kind of more like this. And then you can see a little bit of the corner. I have a show coming up that will be food related and I've been trying to get a couple more pieces in. I have plenty, but I just wanna make sure that I put in the best work that I can. And we've got the shadows kinda of cutting this way. I have two light sources. One is artificial, and then I have the daylight. It's another cloudy day today. How did I learn to draw and paint? Um, I have been drawing all my life, and then I also went to art college for illustration. So I learned quite a bit there. Here's my little sponge. Kind of freaked some of you all out. It's a natural sponge that I got to try to minimize the paper towel usage. But I don't know. I don't know if it's gonna be good. It's okay. Let's see, I need to move my stuff around a little different than usual because my phone is right in the way. So 
So once again, let's get started. I'm gonna start with kind of a yellow ochre, burnt sienna mix with a touch of blue. I don't like using the colors straight from the tube. Some people do, I'm not against it. I just personally, I find it to look a little artificial that way. And I'm working pretty light. This is actually a little bit thicker than I normally do. And then as I get towards the light, it's a little more warm. I'm looking at the negative shape around all these objects. So I'm not actually drawing the bread, I'm drawing around the bread, or painting around the bread. This bit's a little more in shadow, so I'm adding a little more blue to cool it down. Shadow of the avocado. It's kind of got a greenish tint to it. here and I'm always looking to block in the shadows first because the light is gonna change even though it's a cloudy day and it's gonna change less than normal I, I still want to get it in there because it's pretty important I'm only half paying attention to the comments, so I apologize in advance, but I will try to go back and look at them. The paints that I'm using, it's pretty mixed. Um, I've actually been putting in a couple more of, what is it? Uh, the Royal Talons one, I think. Yeah, this one. I've had this primary set and I'm just trying to use up my colors because I'm on a budget these days. And I actually, I really like the consistency of this paint. It's smooth, it's got a nice coverage. But I also use a lot of M. Graham and Winsor & Newton. I get a little frustrated by Winsor & Newton sometimes because the kind of texture of the paint varies a lot. But it is a very high quality paint. 
There's these stripes on this cutting board. I painted this cutting board many times before as well. So I'm pretty familiar with it. But having these stripes helps uh, break things up. What do you think? Yeah. There we go. And the stripes kind of continue over here. They're very subtle. don't even like avocado that much. Probably offending the entire state of California by saying that, but I don't know, I've just never been a big fan. Okay. pretty much successfully painted around all the objects. And I don't always work this way. It's not like I have a specific formula. I kind of just go by my mood sometimes. Whoops. It's the problem with working with really small canvases on this easel. Sorry if my arm's in the way. Just trying to get this covered. The knife edge comes up here a little bit. All right. Get that back on there. So that was all done with this big one inch brush and I'm still, I'm gonna continue with it. Block in this bread. It's pretty yellow. Let's get in some of this avocado since I know that's what you're all waiting for. I think this part here might end up being my favorite because it's cut into a quarter and on the shadow side it's catching a lot of the reflective light from the sky right now. So there's a lot of blue right here. It's really pretty. All right, I'm moving on to a smaller brush. This is a three quarter. It's still pretty big for the size. The canvas size that I'm using right now is, uh, sorry, my dogs. Uh, the canvas size I'm using is five point, wait, is it 5.9? No, 7.9 inches. 
by 7.9. Vicious dogs out there. They pretty much just play all day. Avocados, even though they're green, they have quite a bit of color in them. A lot of reds and purples. You can use the reds against the greens to tone them down is what I'm doing right now for this. It's almost like a, a black. You can see a very thin outline. Same over here. You can see a little bit of this outline of the skin. That's not the skin, but it's a similar value. So I'm just blocking that in there for my own memory. This highlight over here is pretty warm. It's not quite that big, but that's okay. It's getting a little bit of cool light from the sky. I'm gonna add in some of this shadow color. It's also a bluish from the reflected light. This is where the stripe is in the wood. Shadow's kind of a purpley blue. And it changes a little bit. So I like to get almost these gradients going through. And the bread goes all the way up, like up here. Let's get in this crust. The crust goes all the way over here. And there are some subtle color changes. But right now I'm mainly focused on getting the values right. 
And then, I, I mean, I get the color relatively close. I don't want to do something that's completely off, but I'm not really very picky about getting the right color. And this right here is a product of being impatient and I don't recommend it. I should have let that dry because now it's gonna bleed in there and it really should be a sharp edge, but I'm gonna be going over it anyway. see the shape of the knife going through and let's get some of the shadow in here of the avocado it's a really nice blue bluish green. And it's same over here. This side is actually a little bit lighter, a little more blue. It's because it's kind of, it's a different angle. Again, apologies for my arm being in the way. It's really the only way to set up the camera with this still life. couple of these wedges. Oh, I see I'm missing some conversation. Hold on. <laughs> hey, Greco. Um, 140 pound watercolor paper. Oh yeah, so this is a 140 pound watercolor paper. It's a block and um, it's arches. So it's a very high quality block. It is interesting to see how other people hold their brushes. I'm not like, I guess it changes a little bit depending on how close I am to the canvas, but overall I generally like to keep Keep it pretty loose. I'm not very conscious of how I hold my brush. bit of light coming on this side. Then we've got a black handle. Thank you, Avalanche. Yeah, coconut and pancake are outside making trouble. They keep wanting to come in. But it's a nice day out. They can get some outdoor time. Oops. We're 
almost covered. Let's get this pit in. It's pretty warm when the light's hitting it up here. But when I squint, it's a considerably darker belly than this green. So we want to make sure that that's achieved in the end. All right. Um, let's get this shadow of the knife. One of the darkest spots. I don't really want to have this knife touching quite that close. That is a tangent. One of the many principles that has been nailed into my head after working in the games industry. Everyone would always talk about tangents. So I'm pretty careful about it now. For those of you that don't know what a tangent is, it's this. <laughs> it's where an object is just nearly touching or maybe it's overlapping like perfectly and um, it just doesn't read right. You want a clear silhouette between these things. not dry yet so anyway I'm gonna cover up this white and I'm squinting looking for other areas to touch up but overall I think we're about covered. It's pretty messy, huh? All right, let me clean my palette. cleaning my palette because I want um, these next parts to be pretty pure and clean and bright. I'm going to be pushing the values and the light right now. So it's important to have the colors that I want and intend. And it's also giving, while I clean, it's uh, giving the painting a little bit of a chance to dry as it's still pretty wet right now. Moving down in the brush size. So we're down to a half inch. And for those that missed it earlier, these are the two that I did all this with so far. Let's push these values. Right now, we need a lot more of the lights to pop and come through. I'm gonna work on the bread. Bit of yellow. Touch of blue. Touch of red. Is 
assim. Right. There's one piece of bread. And then this one down here is a little more blue. Because it's not as close to the light source. The light source is coming right up here. I'm cooling it down. And then bringing it a little warmer again as we go towards the top. I'm gonna add some of the same warmth and I'm squinting as you should do. Get a little bit of this highlight here. So when I squint, I see these little highlights in the knife. And I see some highlights in the avocados. I think I might take those out later. The highlights are showing because I sprayed it with uh, some lemon juice to keep it from browning. Now I want to work on these stripes. My paint is a lot thicker right now because I want it to be pretty opaque. The stripes are not all the same color. There's a lot of variation because they're all different pieces of wood. And I like that, so I'm gonna try to keep it. Hello, all the way from Germany. What time is it there? this tone of this stripe. It's a little more blue. of a night owl though myself. I 
and I want to make sure to try to get it relatively consistent. And it gets a little more yellow in this darker spot between. And a little brighter on the end. Um, no. <laughs> I can't say I am very influenced by them. I think um, I would need to go back and do a little more learning about my art history. I'm pretty terrible at knowing art history or even other artists. I've been trying to get a little better about that, but I don't know. It's just always been kind of hard for me. And I want to go in and uh, define the outside edges a little better and brighten up the white cloth underneath. I don't want it to be pure white, but pretty close. And it seems really white, but it's going to darken. I can guarantee it. After you work with gouache for a while, you'll learn kind of how it behaves and which colors are gonna change on you. Sometimes it still surprises me, but overall I've gotten a lot better with it. Uh, thank you, Frugi Guitar. Oh, the light's changing outside. I can I can feel it getting brighter. Okay. Let's see here. I'll work a little bit on these avocados before they brown too much. I love the colors of these guys. or girls, or whatever avocados would be. And I'm adding in some of this. Oops. Darker green around the edges. Ah, see the light is so much brighter right now.
being very careful. I want this edge to overlap the knife slightly just because of that whole tangent thing. I'm gonna make it a little bit fatter. Um, let's see. Yeah, the paint right now is pretty thick, so you don't see a lot of the, the blending and bleeding as you did in the first part of the video. And that's just a matter of it, it being thicker. many interesting colors. You see it getting like a darker green. As you go towards the edges. And then I think because the lights change so much that it's kind of messing with my, my values. So I'm going to have to be careful about that. Oh, um, I basically just said that it is because of the dilution of the paint. When I was working earlier and everything was a lot wetter, it was bleeding a lot more into each other. shape is getting a little weird. <laughs> I'll probably go back and define the silhouette later. Ah, thank you, Kenny. It is fun watching painting videos. I find myself kind of addicted to just seeing all the ones in the Explore channel. Cleaning my palette again. Okay, now I'm gonna go in to the uh, other parts, the non-light stripes. 
and I'm going to darken them slightly, or at least get the right values that I'm seeing in colors. It's a lot of yellow ochre, burnt sienna, a little bit of blue. Once again, it's not all the same color throughout. It changes slightly. It's getting warmer towards the light. And of course it matters what temperature of light you're using. I opted for, as I usually do, a more warm light. A lot of really nice colors in here. I knew this one was gonna be fun to paint. Gives me an opportunity to paint into the shape and kind of shape this avocado better. And also give more space between the knife and the avocado. And I'm gonna be going back into this stuff because when I squint, the shadows are way too light. But also right now, the sun is completely out. So it's kind of messing with everything.
paint's getting pretty thick. I'm going to spray it down soon. But you see how I'm dipping in and kind of switching up the color a little bit with each with each stroke. It gives it that nice varied feel. You know, it's not all just one flat color. But don't just go in and, you know, start throwing down a bunch of colors either. You have to kind of learn what colors you're seeing. Although I do think some people get away with just throwing down color. It can look impressive. adding little bits of this color wherever I'm seeing it. I wish there was a timer on here so I could see how much time I have left before it cuts out on me. Trying to remember the shadow color. Actually, I'm going to go on a little more. Can add these dots on the knife handle. Sorry, handle goes up a little farther. Everyone's so quiet. Hello, Harry's shitty art. <laughs> I'm sure it's not. Okay. I want to 
trying to find these edges a little better. Thank you, Emma. Going in, darkening this. Just trying to add a little bit of form. Oops. It's like the one day when I <clears throat> want the sun to actually go away and it's staying out. this crust a little bit. There is a lot of variation in the color up here too. Thank you, Harry. Oops. The bread almost blends in with the background here. 